Take a puff with one finger on it, says to make a bet. Take a puff with two fingers on the cigarette, that means to double down. Number 10, dice controlling with Dominic the Dice Dominator. When it comes to the secret behind the first scam on our list, it's all in the wrist. Or at least that's what Dominic Lo Regio, also known as Dominic the Dice Dominator, will tell you. You see, Dominic has made a killing and a living using a method he refers to as dice control. You set the dice, you grip them gently, you throw them in the air with the same velocity and energy and rotation, get them to land softly at the end of the table before the back wall and let them stop dead. With it, Loregio can turn a flick of the wrist into whatever winning combination he desires. Although some have countered Dominic's claims as the braggings of a seasoned con man, the fact that Loregio is banned from numerous casinos speaks volumes as to the success rate of his chosen method, which he teaches to others for a price. Number 9. Sector Targeting Where there's a will and new technology, there's a way. Case in point, this 2004 incident involving two Siberian men and a Hungarian woman, who took the Ritz Casino in London to the tune of 1.3 million pounds. Their plan of attack? A method called sector targeting, which used a laser scanner on their smartphones to predict where the ball would land on the Ritz's roulette tables. The real kicker? Though they were arrested after the casino reviewed security footage, many charges were reportedly dropped given that sector targeting wasn't yet technically covered by gambling laws. Clearly, it pays to be on the cutting edge. Number 8. Card Switching Casinos rely on black books of names and photos, such as the famous Griffin book, to identify advantage players and cheaters. They got no sympathy for you. Two names that reportedly appear in Nevada's black book are John Dixon and Robert Isle, who were both accused of card switching back in the 1980s. The men would allegedly sit close to each other and pass cards to each other beneath the table and under their wagers. They would also employ accomplices, usually bribed cocktail waitresses, to assist them in their scheme as either lookouts or distractions. Number 7. The Tran Organization Speaking of bribery, the infamous Californian-based Tran Organization went well beyond greasing the palms of the waitstaff, taking their offers right to the dealers. The group, which reportedly was over 40 members strong, had their crooked dealers perform false shuffles at Baccarat tables, during which Tran members would track the order of cards. Take a puff with one finger on it, says to make a bet. Take a puff with two fingers on the cigarette, that means to double down. The gang used microphones to share information and computer programs to predict what cards would be drawn, taking various North American casinos for over $7 million before they were caught. Of course, that's just the activity that authorities were able to uncover. Number 6. Louis Colavecchio and the Counterfeit Coins Have you ever wondered why today's slot machines give out paper vouchers, as opposed to the tokens so often seen in old school movies? Well, it's in part thanks to the criminal activities of Louis the Coin Colavecchio, who took casinos in Atlantic City and Connecticut for a ride for years. He did this by creating replica tokens during his day job as a jeweler. Of course, the fact that Colavecchio was also in the mob made the reproduction of these coins all the more lucrative. That is, until he was caught in 1998 and sentenced to seven years in prison. Number 5. Phil Ivey's Edge Sorting Professional gamblers will often look at even the most minute of details in order to gain an edge. Phil Ivey was one such gambler, and he used a technique known as edge sorting to controversially win nearly $20 million. The idea is to convince the dealer to rotate high-value cards, for example by saying you're superstitious, then pick them out using asymmetrical irregularities on their long edges. Ivy took the Borgata Casino in New Jersey and London's Crockfords for millions, but wasn't allowed to keep any of it thanks to court decrees that determined Ivy's edge sorting to be cheating. Some people believe that it was cheating. I know it wasn't, and that's why we're going to court. Number four. Richard Marcus's Chip Stacking Richard Marcus spent time behind the table as a Vegas blackjack and baccarat dealer, but it was his activity as a player that earned him infamy as a casino scammer. His technique was simple, but effective. Marcus took advantage of the fact that the red $5 chips looked remarkably similar to the brown $500 chips. He would place two red chips sticking out slightly from a bottom brown one. If he lost the hand, 
Marcus would switch out the bottom chip for another red. But if he won, then he would be sure to let the dealer know that the bottom one was brown and keep the profit. You ever play roulette? On occasion. Well, let me give you a word of advice. Always bet on black. Number three, restroom roulette scam. The next scam on our list also involves chips and the old switcheroo, and it reportedly hit Ohio area casinos big time in 2012. Would you pick a number for me? <laughs> could use all the luck I can get. Dozens of people were reportedly involved in a roulette crime ring, which involved people placing really low bets, and then stealing chips from dealers who were distracted by other members of the ring. The accomplices would then meet up in places such as public restrooms to pass along the stolen chips and bring them up to the cashiers. Although some of these scammers were caught, many remain at large today, while the ring itself reportedly scammed casinos in 18 different states nationwide. Number two, can contact lens ruse. We mentioned earlier that smartphone technology has helped cheaters scam casinos, but what about something as seemingly harmless as a contact lens? Italian scammer Stefano Ampolini ingeniously used infrared contact lenses to get one over on Les Princes Casino in Cannes, France in 2011. With the help of an insider, Ampolini and his accomplices were able to mark a deck of cards with invisible ink. Ampolini was able to walk away with almost $100,000, but was arrested two months later when he returned for a second helping. Before we name our number one scam, here are a few not so honorable mentions. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The MIT Blackjack Team Who says you can't beat the house? The MIT Blackjack Team used card counting to beat casinos worldwide in the 80s and early 90s. Plus 14. Uh, ring. Plus 16. Sweet. Use it in a sentence. Man, that sugar's sweet. In its simplest form, card counting involves using a point system to track the ratio of low to high cards by adding one point for low cards dealt and subtracting one point for high cards. Jack, plus 12. Nine, still plus 12. Blackjack. It wasn't illegal, although it might get you banned. Maybe you're just smarter than everybody else, huh? Yeah, I bet it's been that way your entire life. Except it just recently started paying dividends, am I right? The technique was pioneered by mathematician Edward O. Thorpe in the 1960s. But the MIT Blackjack team took it to new levels, hitting casino after casino and eventually expanding from a small group of six students to a team of 80. They later split into smaller groups who continued to take casinos by storm. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.